Hey, I'm Dr. Austin Perlmutter. I want to tell you why extra virgin olive oil is such an important brain health superfood. And I'm going to tell you a little bit of the background as to why fat is such an issue for certain people as it relates to their concern about fat and health and why extra virgin olive oil, despite being a fat, is actually a great thing for most people to include in their diet, especially if your goal is to help prevent dementia, help prevent mental health issues, and how to generally optimize your health and your brain health. So in this video, we're going to get into the mechanisms by by which olive oil, specifically extra virgin olive oil, may be so beneficial for our brain health. And we're going to talk about some of the considerations around if you do choose to eat olive oil, how much should you be consuming and what considerations do you need to have around where you source that olive oil from. If you're new here, if you haven't heard me before, I'm Dr. Austin Promoter. I'm an internal medicine doctor by training, but I've done a ton of education around brain health. I've written a book on brain health. I've published research on brain health. And my goal is to help give you practical strategies to improve your brain health today and to protect your brain health for tomorrow. So in that vein, here is my take on extra virgin olive oil as it relates to brain health. And if you're interested to learn more, make sure you're subscribing to my videos and to my content. Extra virgin olive oil has been uh, basically emerging as one of the most important brain health foods when we look at the available literature on the correlations between diet and brain health. People have been eating olive oil for a long time, but in the last hundred or so years, there has been this changeover as it relates to how we think about specifically fat. And really we're talking more about 60 or so years ago. We have historically, as a human species, eaten a good amount of fat, but sometime around 60 or so years ago, there was pushback against the idea that fat is good for us. And in particular, this came from the idea that the consumption of saturated fat was correlated with higher risk for cardiovascular disease. Now, cardiovascular disease was then, as it is now, the top killer of people around the world. So obviously, we don't want more people to die early. We should be thinking about what we can do to prevent that premature death. And it was decided in the United States, and then it was adopted in other parts of the world, that a diet high in fat might be a risk factor for heart disease, in particular, saturated fat. Somewhere in the crosshairs, though, we lost sight of the actual issue, which was that there is a nuance between different types of fat as it relates to health outcomes. And one of the things that we may be lost along the way was that certain fats are actually really good for us. And in particular, certain fats are really good for the brain. I would say in the continuum, in the spectrum of fats that are good or bad for us, especially for our brains, on the bad side, we have trans fats. And I don't think there's any debate at this point that trans fats are an issue. They increase inflammation, they're correlated with a number of negative health outcomes. But on the other end of the spectrum, we have monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats. And this includes molecules like the omega-3 fatty acids, which we know are highly represented in our brain makeup. Generally speaking, if you're thinking about why does fat matter for your brain, realize that if you were to take the water out of your brain, it would be mostly by weight made of fat. So of course we want to build that brain out of healthier fats. So with all this as background, let's talk specifically about what is in olive oil and some mechanisms that help to explain why olive oil, in particular extra virgin olive oil, is so important for brain health. So if we were to take olive oil and break it down on average, we would look at the composition of what is in it. And it is an oil. It is liquid at room temperature, which helps to speak to the fact that it is mostly unsaturated fat. Saturated fats tend to be solid at room temperature. So you think about things like butter or lard, they are solid, whereas the unsaturated fats tend to be liquid. Olive oil is about 83% by weight made out of monounsaturated fats. And all that really means is a question of uh, how many double bonds are in the molecule. So a monounsaturated fat has a single double bond, polyunsaturated fats have multiple double bonds, just kind of an organic chemistry equation type thing. But what you need to know is that olive oil is made up of around 83% monounsaturated fats. And generally speaking, monounsaturated fats are thought to be relatively helpful to our health as opposed to saturated fats where there is still a whole lot more debate. In addition to the fat content of olive oil, it is rich in molecules called polyphenols. Polyphenols, again, this is kind of an organic chemistry piece, but it is described based on the fact that you have multiple phenol rings that are linked together. 
Polyphenols are a large group of 8,000 plus molecules. They're found naturally in plants, and we now understand that a diet rich in polyphenols may be one of the most important brain protective diets that we can eat. So combining these things, olive oil has a lot of fat, has a lot of monounsaturated fat, has these polyphenols, which may be beneficial to brain health. How does it actually map onto the mechanisms that may help to support brain health now and prevent brain health issues in the future? I think it is really important for everyone to understand that researchers are relatively in consensus as it relates to what is the best diet for brain health. And that diet is basically a Mediterranean diet or a MIND diet, M-I-N-D. They're both similar, or I should say, they both have majority of similarity. The MIND diet brings in some elements of the DASH diets, the dietary approaches to stop hypertension. But by and large, these are both diets rich in minimally processed foods. There's some debate over what exactly constitutes the Mediterranean pattern diet, but it is generally considered to be one that includes olive oil, specifically extra virgin olive oil. And this is a diet, a Mediterranean diet uh, or a MIND diet that has been studied to be correlated with lower risk for dementia, depression, and I should say a host of other health issues. So a Mediterranean diet may be preventive against diabetes, heart disease, premature death. One of the reasons why a Mediterranean diet and the olive oil potentially in this diet is so beneficial is that it may help to decrease levels of inflammation in people. And as a little bit of a background here, the immune system is a whole lot bigger than just inflammation. But one of the things that can go wrong with the immune system is that it becomes locked in to a state of low level inflammation. This low level inflammation correlates with basically every chronic disease on the planet, but certainly things like diabetes, obesity, heart disease, certain types of cancers, as well as dementia and depression. So we have some data suggesting that people who eat a diet like the Mediterranean pattern diet have lower levels of inflammation when you measure them in their bloodstream. And if you look at animal and cell data, consuming extra virgin olive oil for animals or exposing cells to molecules within extra virgin olive oil in cells actually helps to decrease levels of inflammation. And there was one study that I want to highlight in particular where they took brain cells called microglial cells. And these are immune cells that live in your brain. You've got uh, billions of these cells in your brain right now. And they found that the molecules in specifically the polyphenols in olive oil could help to decrease the amount of inflammation produced by these microglial cells. Overactive microglial cells are thought to be a potential driver of everything from Parkinson's disease to depression to dementia. So this is really important science because what we're saying here is that nutrients in our food and in particular an extra virgin olive oil may help to regulate the brain's immune system and bring down that inflammation that can contribute to a host of negative brain health conditions. Another really interesting potential mechanism by which extra virgin olive oil may benefit our brains and our bodies is that in preclinical research, extra virgin olive oil may actually activate a process called autophagy. Autophagy is a term that you may never have heard about before, but it is gaining a lot of traction, especially in the longevity research space, because autophagy is a process that allows for our cells to clean themselves up, to replace parts of them uh, that may have been damaged or may not be functioning at their top level. And autophagy is thought to, in that way, promote longevity because it helps your cells to rejuvenate themselves and to function at a higher level for longer amounts of time. So again, preclinical data suggesting that extra virgin olive oil may activate autophagy, which is really interesting as it relates to potential benefits to longevity. Now, the next point that I'm gonna make here is maybe my favorite one, because often we talk about these macro systems like inflammation uh, as it relates to a benefit from a food. But when it comes to the brain, we know that what gets through the blood-brain barrier is so important as it relates to brain health. The blood-brain barrier kind of surrounds the majority of the brain, and it helps to protect the brain from what is happening in the bloodstream. So if, for example, 
uh, we get some sort of a problem in our bloodstream where there are big changes in molecules, including inflammation or infection or rapid changes in electrolytes, the blood-brain barrier can help to mitigate some of this. In particular, it helps to keep out the bad stuff while letting in the good stuff if it is working correctly. There has been the suggestion that the blood-brain barrier can become leakier or damaged over time, and that this may actually correlate with higher risk for things like cognitive impairment, dementia, as well as mental health conditions. So in one study that was just published, they took people with mild cognitive impairment and they had them consume extra virgin olive oil. What they found is that there were improvements in blood brain barrier function. Specifically, it was less leaky. And they also found they had reductions in amyloid beta level. Why does that matter? It's because amyloid beta is a molecule that increases in conditions like Alzheimer's dementia. So daily consumption of extra virgin olive oil in this case was correlated with these incredible findings in humans. So benefits to the blood brain barrier, which is really revolutionary science. Okay, let's just talk more generally about the benefits to cognition that come from humans consuming olive oil. There was a systematic review that was published that looked at all the available research, and what they found is that when they compared olive oil consumption with various markers of cognition, they found that people who consumed more olive oil had better scores on cognitive testing, including an Alzheimer's-specific cognitive test and an auditory verbal learning test. The final mechanism that I want to discuss with you before I get into some of the specifics as to what you should be looking for in your olive oil to make sure it is actually providing you the most benefit, the most bang for your buck, is that extra virgin olive oil may actually help to maintain synapses. This is preclinical data, but realize in your brain right now, you have somewhere between 80 and 100 billion neurons, and that these neurons can have up to a thousand different synapses. The health, the strength of these synapses is absolutely vital for your brain to function at a high level. And extra virgin olive oil, again, in a preclinical model, has been found to improve, to maintain the health of these synapses. So it's another reason why extra virgin olive oil may have these very targeted effects on enhancing our brain health. So with all of this in mind, the bottom line to this is that in human data, people who consume more olive oil tend to have better brain health outcomes. And when we look mechanistically and in animal data, there are a number of reasons, a number of pathways that seem to help us understand exactly why extra virgin olive oil may be so beneficial to the brain. The important consideration here is if you do choose to consume extra virgin olive oil, how much should you be taking? Where should you be getting it from? In the United States and increasingly around the world, people know that extra virgin olive oil is something people are willing to pay a lot for, but the supply can be limited. And in order to bring down prices, many manufacturers will actually cut olive oil with other forms of vegetable oil to decrease their prices. But in the process, you're not getting the brain boosting benefits of extra virgin olive oil. So look for a third party certification. There's a COOC, Certified Extra Virgin Olive Oil Seal, that comes from California. The European Union has a protected designation of origin seal. Uh, and you want to make sure that the olive oil actually says extra virgin. And it really should taste peppery. You want to be tasting those polyphenols. It shouldn't taste flat. It shouldn't taste like nothing. Real extra virgin olive oil has flavor. Another consideration around this is you want to make sure you're actually getting the nutrients from the olive oil that you need. Because of the nature of extra virgin olive oil, it can oxidize, which means you want to purchase it in a bottle that is dark, that is protected from the sun. And also keep it out of the sun. You should try to consume your olive oil in around three to four months once you've actually opened that bottle. Now, finally, let's get to dosage. If we're looking at olive oil as a health intervention, uh, we know that the data says that somewhere around one to two tablespoons, there's some data on even half a tablespoon, but around 15 to 30 milliliters, which is around uh, one to two tablespoons of extra olive oil a day, extra virgin olive oil a day is really where the research tells us we should be looking. So that's where we start to see some of these neuroprotective benefits. Doesn't mean you can't have more olive oil. Again, there's some data suggesting that even a half a tablespoon may be beneficial, but in aggregate, looking at between one to two tablespoons is likely the place you want to be. So with all of this said, if you're saying, well, I want to start eating more or drinking more olive oil, where should I put it? 
I think extra virgin olive oil is an incredibly versatile food. You can put it in salad dressings. That's probably the most common place that people use it. I tend to use it with uh, apple cider vinegar because I learned somewhat recently that many of the vinegars that you can purchase like balsamic tend to have added sugar, whereas ACV or apple cider vinegar not only doesn't have the sugar, but also may benefit our metabolic health. So salad dressings for sure. You can use it as a marinade. You can drizzle it over vegetables, add it to hummus. Uh, certainly easy to use when you're cooking grains or anything you're cooking in the oven. Um, you can put it on top of fish or poultry or any sort of meat that you're cooking. And then you can, again, dress it with the olive oil after it comes out of the oven or put it in your soups. Basically, it's just a whole lot of ways that you can benefit from adding this olive oil to your daily diet. So with all that said, that is a deep dive into the potential benefits of extra virgin olive oil and everything from dementia to depression uh, to general brain health state. And I would say, as we look at all the different foods and the level of evidence, the amount of evidence we have for any food being a brain booster, extra virgin olive oil has to be at the top of that list. So if this was interesting to you, if you have any comments or questions, uh, let me know. I'd love to hear them. And if you would like to continue to learn about your brain and how food influences your brain, make sure to subscribe so you can hear more from me and I can hear more from you. Thanks for watching.